Today's study was follow up on an ongoing effort that I'm calling sourdough for science. Sourdough is an awesome way to study microbial communities that does not require fancy lab equipment or health and safety. And when you're done, you can analyze your data and you can bake with that microbial community. When you grow a sourdough starter from scratch, you start with two tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of water. You end up with about two tablespoons of paste. The next day you remove one of those tablespoons of paste. So you're left with one tablespoon. Then you add equal parts, one tablespoon of flour, one tablespoon of water. So you have two tablespoons again. And it's kind of like cutting your lawn. You're removing half of the community to leave plenty of room for what's left to grow and you're feeding what's left plenty of resources to grow for another 24 hours. In those first two weeks, there's a community shift of the succession process, which I get super nerdy and lovey about. We have different types of yeasts that are maybe not making as much carbon dioxide that would contribute to that height that we see in the other starters. Or it could be differences in actually the composition of those flowers. Lacking gluten means that they are lacking all those protein molecules that form a network that acts as a balloon to trap the carbon dioxide. Talking to Lauren Nichols, she suggested take those same types of flour, add in the same amount of water, but spike in baker's yeast, which it tends to be all a single strain of all a single species, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So we would know without a doubt that the most functionally active member of the community would be one species of yeast. And it's been, pun intended, bred in a lab to chew up sugars and starch and produce carbon dioxide so quickly that it's not only going to swamp out any of the other members of the community in the flower, but it's also going to functionally swamp out any other yeasts that might even want to try to make carbon dioxide because it works so quickly and effectively over such short time scales. We were able to pull that all together, 30 sourdough starters with baker's yeast, three reps of each of the 10 types of flours. You can actually visually compare not only how much variation there is within each flower type, but you should also see them rising and falling at different amounts like a living bar chart.